Hey what's up guys, my name is Echerno, and welcome to the second episode of my Flappy Bird series. Today we'll be setting up the display for our game, using LWJGL. Firstly, let's open our project in Eclipse. Then, we'll right click on the SRC, or Source, folder in our project, and choose New, then Class. A class is really just a collection of code that's meant to do a specific thing, or represent something. In this case, we need to make a class that essentially launches our game. So first, let's set a package. A package in Java is essentially a folder hierarchy that we use to organize our code, kind of like a namespace. The first couple of folders usually refer to the domain name or company name you're developing as, in reverse order. So I'm going to put com.thecherno. Each dot indicates a separate folder, much like a forward or backslash. Next we put the name of this software project, which in this case is Flappy. Remember all this is just a convention, so you could just put games.flappy or anything else and that would work fine. Later, we'll add more specific folders to deal with elements in our game such as graphics and sound, but this class will essentially be in the base folder. Now we need to give this class a name. This is going to be our main class, that is, the class that contains the main method needed in order to start our game. So I'm just going to call this class main. You should always start your class name with a capital letter. It's not required, but it's a fairly strongly enforced convention. Finally, you can check this box here if you like to let Eclipse automatically create the main method for you, but I'm going to go ahead and type it out myself so you can see. After we click finish, we have our class. Let's add the main method. All you have to really remember here is that whatever code that is in this method is what actually gets executed when you run your game. We'll leave it blank for now, since we don't have anything to put into it yet. Let's declare some fields up the top which will define some of the properties of our game. Fields are variables that can be used throughout their entire class. Private means they're only visible in this main class. Int refers to the variable being an integer, a whole number. And finally, we're going to go ahead and call the variable width, and then make another one for height. This will be the size of our window, in pixels, 1280 by 720. We'll also create a string, which is a bunch of characters, called title, which will be the title of our window. I'll name it flappy. Next we'll create a boolean, a variable that can be either true or false, and call it running. This variable will dictate whether or not our game is currently running. Finally, we'll make a thread. We'll get more into threads in just a sec. Let's create a method first called start. This is what we'll use to start our game. We'll set running equal to true, and initialize our thread object. Threads allow us to do multiple things simultaneously. The reason I'm making one here is because I want our game to have its own thread instead of the default Java one. This makes sure that we only perform certain things on this thread, particularly the rendering of our display. In the constructor, we'll pass in this, referring to this class, and optionally we can give this thread a name. I'll call it display, since it will primarily be responsible for our OpenGL code. Okay, fantastic, but this will give you an error since we passed in a class using the this keyword, referring to the class you're currently looking at, which isn't yet a runnable class. So let's go back up to the top and implement runnable. A runnable class is simply a class that has a run method, which we'll be forced to create now. The way this works is pretty simple. We passed in this when we created the thread. So when we start the thread by calling thread.start, the new thread will call the run method below that we just created, in this class. Everything inside the run method will now be executed on our new thread. Now let's create our display. Inside the run method, we'll type in display.setDisplayMode to new display mode width, comma, height. We'll have to import display mode, so hover your mouse over it and make sure you import the LWJGL one, not the Java one. This line will set up the size of our window to the width and height we specified above. Now it looks like we've got one big error, but don't worry, setting a display mode simply throws an exception, which we now have to handle. Hover your mouse over that line and select surround with try and catch. There you go, all good. Inside the try block, let's set the title of our window to the title variable, flappy, that we created before. And finally, let's call display.create to create our display. That's most of the code done. Simple, isn't it? Now let's make our main game loop. Our game will have to repeat certain events as long as it's running. We'll have to keep updating our display by calling display.update, and if the user closes the window, we need to set running equal to false. If that happens, our while loop will be history, and we'll need to destroy our display to close the window. Now we're ready to see if our code worked. Let's call new main.start, which will create a new instance of our main class, and then call the start method, which of course will start our game. Thread.start will call our run method, and we'll get into our loop until we close the window. Note that we can't simply call the start method by itself, since the main method is static and our start method is not. Let's launch our game by clicking on the debug button and see what happens. Great, a black screen which seems to be the size we wanted and has the correct title. 
and we've succeeded. Unfortunately, that's not all. While this will probably work on all platforms, Mac and Linux by default will use OpenGL 2.1 or lower, whilst Windows will typically use the highest version available. OpenGL 2.1 is too low for us, we want 3.3, so how do we get it? We request it. Before we create the display, we'll need to create a context attributes object, and set it equal to 3, 3, since we want OpenGL 3.3. Let's import context attributes differently than what we did last time. We'll use the keyboard shortcut Control shift o or Command shift o if you're on Mac, to let Eclipse organize our imports. Let's select the OpenGL context attributes rather than OpenGL ES and click Finish. Organized imports will import all required classes that we're currently using, and is generally a much quicker way to import classes. It will also remove any imports that we're not using, pretty neat. Now when we create our display, we'll create a new pixel format and pass in our context object, along with a statement with profile core, true. The OpenGL core profile means that any old deprecated code will essentially be removed, so we're stuck with only the ability to use code still supported in 3.3. That's great, since it will actively stop us from writing old school code. That should be enough. However, there is currently a bug with how LWJGL requests an OpenGL context from Mac, and possibly Linux as well. Requesting 3.3 gets us 2.1, and requesting 3.2 gets us either 3.3 or 4.1, depending on the computer. Pretty bizarre. So basically, we need to set our context attributes to 3.2 if the game runs on Mac. Note that this is for version 2.9.1 of LWJGL, so hopefully this bug will be fixed soon. So how can we check if we're on Mac? Let's go ahead and type in an if statement to check to see if a certain system property, called os.name, contains the string Mac. If so, we're on Mac, and we can go ahead and set the context equal to 3.2. And now we're done. Let's check to see that our window still works. Great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next episode, where we'll be setting up OpenGL. Goodbye.